I figured this might interest somebody. This is a slightly more recent flare infrared camera. I was just mentioning them online. So this is like a modern, probably 2006, 2007 device. So as you can see, it's a lot more compact and also it's got a lot fewer boards. So literally, it only has either two or three circuit boards. You can see there's like a breakout. See. Sorry, it's not very well lit in here. There's a lot of noise. You've got a breakout and then you have the actual board on the back of the sensor, I think. Uh, there may be one more layer in there. Yeah, I think there is. But you can actually see that it's actually if you look at the gold section there, the sensor has moved into something along the lines of a Surdip style package or a ceramic package. This one has focus. This is a more wide angle viewfinder. So it's only got one big connector. They use a... Um, it's actually a VGA. It's a D15 connector in any event. So literally, there's three boards in here, but this top board, the one that's most visible, is literally just, it goes from this multi-pin connector to the D15, and they make some other connectors with similar, um, there are some other boards that have different connectors on them. Then this D15 goes to the weirdest kind of funky power and coaxial breakout is a kind of an interesting, it's a screw-on latching coaxial, you know, just a barrel connector. So it's a standard barrel connector with a, a retention nut on it, and then there's B and C out. So this is also intended for use as a security camera. So there's the actual camera. One of the things you can, that's kind of interesting is, excuse me, there's the actual spring for the flat field calibration. And I believe if we take the lens off, I actually dropped the lens on one of these before. That was rather traumatizing. So there's the back end of the lens and you can see the package is yet different. This one has a square window like I was discussing. You can see the flat field calibration vein up in that corner. So this is less vin even less vintage, more recent than the one I showed on my previous video. We have a couple of these floating around where I work. There's also a couple that are still in cans. So they've made this, the surveillance camera more compact and this is the actual production packaging. You can see it's all nice folded aluminum. Actually, um, it looks like it may be intended to come free. Oh yeah. Have a look at that. So there's the actual camera module. So it's just got a big two millimeter pitch, something about that header on it. And you can see this is all DC to DC. And then there's only one screw holding that on, but I don't feel like taking it apart, especially since I'm doing this all one-handed. Then on the other side of this board is the big ace. The bottom board has got the big ASIC I was talking about. And you can actually, I don't know if you can make it out, but there's a blue thermal pad under there clamping it to this big aluminium housing. And then I believe that line of pins right there is the actual breakout from the sensor. So they've reduced the pin count of the sensor dramatically, either by moving some of the active components into the sensor or basically just simplifying the readout mechanism. I'm not honestly certain. I don't know how much, they, much about the internals. So there's a very quick overview of a much more recent and also much more compact FLIR infrared camera. And as an addendum to the previous video, and just because I figured I want you guys to hate me some more, yes, we do have several of them. And by several I mean one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then there's at least one more in the cabinet. These breakout boards to the VGA.
And here is a FLIR security camera. So this is intended for outdoor mounting. So it's got this big cast aluminium or some sort of pop metal housing. This is also, again, a more recent version. So this uses the newer camera module rather than the one I have. And it's got, uh, oh wow. This one has a motorized tilt mechanism in it. I don't know if it has pan, but it's got a big kind of rather gooey bearing down there. Just a big metal can. It's extremely heavy, probably weighs 15 or 20 pounds. I think it also pans. So this has got an automated pan tilt and just standard composite output and then a whole bunch of something. This may be power and then the two motors, I'm not sure. And then it comes with a bunch of cables. I'm not sure. I'm not familiar with a lot of the stuff, it's just kind of floating around. So there you go. Well, I figured out what's supposed to control this. Looks like this is intended for marine time applications and just an on-off switch. These don't seem to be... Oh, hey, they're fuses. So it's got two fuses. Two amp fuses and then there's just a... Um, this is a joystick. So presumably that handles up, down, and left, and right. So it's a pan-tilt mechanism and here's the controller. It's got that big connector on the back and then DC in and then it comes with a little brick presumably for testing, because I don't think you exactly have 120 volt mains on a boat. But it's labeled Mariner, so I'm pretty sure it's for 